prefer to have sex. That sex is the most powerful thing you can ever have. It's like bonding with people. And you can bond with the wrong people. If I wanted to have sex, I should have sex with 20 people. Multiple partners. But if you're going to have sex with one person, you must understand the spirituality of this human being. Are there people who are going to take your destiny from you? Are there people who are going to stop you from being successful? Are there people who are going to limit your uh, existence and everything in life? You have to understand it from looking at the people in the eyes. What people think, think is a joke. So, each time I have sex, I will be broke for at least three months. I will never achieve anything for three months. I will have miserable life for three months. And it continues that way. I don't know if it happens to anybody here, but it happens to me all the time. So I tend to stay away from it. And now it takes us back to the monks in the Catholic Church, to the nuns, uh, because we believe that sex can take away the purity of your spirituality. And this can only be understood by people who are connected to the earth, to the true religion of where they come from. But it's okay if Christians don't believe in it. That is their business. But in Igbo cosmology, we are asked to believe more in what and how we came into existence. Now, uh, in Igbo land, we call traditional menala. O-M-N-E-A-L-A. -E menala, which is tradition. And and in Igbo land, how many minutes do I have? You have time. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, time. okay. okay. Yeah. In, in, in Igbo land, we have Christianity as the current religion, which has completely deceived so many people. I have heard to take a lot of pastors to the shrine where I perform rituals, secretly. They're still on my Facebook. So when I talk about my religion publicly, they come into my inbox and say, Prof, don't... Please don't say this publicly. I said no. When next few people inbox me, I'm going to list your names on my Facebook. Because they come to my shrine and then they say they come to take powers to go and perform miracles in church. So after church services in the morning, pastors go to the shrines in the evening and night to kill cows, goats, chickens, perform rituals, and go back to the church and encourage people to uh, disrespect traditional religion, but they come at night and commune with uh, one the chief, chief priestess of the shrine. And I find that very, very, very hypocritical. And I tend to uh, to uh, release their names very soon if they do not stop. <laughs> so now in Nigeria we have a lot of very, very religious people. We don't have spiritual people. We don't have people who ask questions. What they do is they believe what they've been told by the pastors. So they go to church just because everyone else is going to church and that is okay for them. Uh, in Igbo land as well, we believe in the dead. Yeah, we believe in the dead and I will explain that. Um, in November last year, my father was very, very sick. He has a diabetes and he was having a external wound everywhere and he, he was in Nigeria and I told my brother who is a pastor that I wanted to take my father to, I wanted to bring him to the U.S. And he said, no, 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 we have to take him to church. I said, no, I'm not taking him to church. And then he said, that money you want to use us to send him to America, we can use it and build a house. I said, but who is going to live in the house? The dead, the ghost? Of my father? No. So I ignored his call for three weeks and I took my, brought my father to Ohio University and he stayed with me for six months and he got very, very well. So he didn't die. No, but, but while he was in my house, so many people in my village were dying. And each time anybody died, I would tell my dad, Oh, you know this person, he's dead. And he said, No, I'm not going back there. I don't want to die like that. But this is the truth. Most of the people who died had kids. They had kids who are very rich. But once they died, their kids were ready to organize huge funerals. They call it befitting funerals in Nigeria. Befitting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they organized huge 